who, which book was being referred to and which people was Muhammad instructing you to go? The, book, I think at the, time he's referring to the Jews, the Christians. The Jews, right, okay. What book was being referred to? The Psalms. The Torah. The Torah, yeah. Right, exactly. So, if that is the case, had you read the Bible or investigated it to see or validated it to see whether it's true? Bro, listen, let me tell you something. Sin, the only way sin is addressed is by the shedding of blood. That's in the Torah. That's what it says. The shedding of blood. Now, when God gave the lamb of for them to kill a lamb yeah. and sprinkle the blood on the altar, yes? It was a temporary system teaching the Jews that one day a savior will come and his blood will be shed once and for all. Before he comes, this is what I want you to do to atone for your sin, yes? This is the system throughout. It comes later down the line and Jesus now becomes that sacrifice his blood is now shed so for our sin the pre new testament prophets, right how did they amend their sins by faith right in yeah. not in the sacrifice of a lamb okay. but by faith in the understanding that there's going to be a savior who will shed his blood so when they took a lamb without blemish yes that was typifying the attributes of a savior who is without sin yes Jesus was without sin when they killed the lamb that is typifying the coming crucifixion of Jesus Christ and his blood being shed when the blood was shed on the altar it is showing that blood was the only sacrifice for the atonement of their sin so their faith was in the coming Savior not in the ritual of killing a lamb and they understood this. Modern day Jews. Yes. They still do sacrifice. They're deceived. They're backslidden. And they're on their way to hell if they don't repent. Every time when I tell my my friend tells me, Oh, you guys are like Allah is a deceiver. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because um, he made it appear as Jesus died on the cross, right? I say to them, right, Jesus is the Bible, isn't he a deceiver as well? To the Jews, because the Jews have been told that God can't be a man, that God is one. Yeah. And then Christians have come in saying he's three and no, 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 no. But the Quran came 600 years after the Bible. How long did, was the gap between Jesus and Moses? And Jesus? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Con A couple centuries context. Well. Context. Good point. Yeah. yeah. The Quran came. Hold on, hold on, brother. The, the no, 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 no. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Let me explain to you how. You see, you need to understand the nature of Jesus. Yes? Right. Right? In the book of Isaiah 9 6, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is 700 years before Jesus. Yes? Okay. Right, good. Big gap. Yeah. In the book of John, in, in the New Testament, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, yes, and through Him all things were created. So the Word that's being referred to is equal to God, is God, and has the power to create. Then further down that same chapter, it says, And the Word put on flesh and dwelt among us. So, hold on. So Jesus was fully God and fully man. Well, how does that work? Bear with me two seconds. I'll explain. There were times that it was essential that he expressed himself through his humanity, depending on what lesson needed to be taught and what audience he was addressing. And there were times that he needed to express himself through his divinity, depending on what... So when he says, me and my father are one, that was his divinity speaking. And when he says, I pray to the Father, that was his humanity speaking. Or you could say, so when he goes, say it was just... Whoever the author was just editing no, those bits. No, no. So, so when he says, I do nothing without the Father, normal, or when normal, he prays normal, to the normal, Father, normal, his humanity is praying, but his divinity wait, 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 is intact. He's man, but then when, when he wants to be divine, when the author wants him to be divine. No, like, no. But you've got to remember that you are compelled, you are compelled to keep the Torah and the Injils. Okay. The you, you know it says that. But you know it says that. Yes, it says, but we don't have the Injils it says, today. The Quran is written Jesus. to confirm the Old Testament and yeah. the New Testament. Yes. Okay. Correct? That's what it says in your Quran. Yes. Right. In the Old Testament and New Old Testament. Testament. New Testament and Last Testament. 
Yes. And in those testaments, yeah. it, 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 it attributes God, Jesus being God, okay. fully God and fully man. When, when we get so what are you going to say to that? When we get to this point of the discussion, it gets really tedious because then it comes into the, the truthfulness of the scripture, yeah. this and that. So I think when we come to this, it's, it's a bit of a dead end. Okay, so let me turn, let me turn the conversation around. Okay, cool. you, you, are, you have a human nature. Yes. You've got a sinful nature. Yes. Yes? yes? Your sin without blood can never be addressed okay. without the shedding of blood according to, according to the Torah yeah according to the Torah, Torah. Okay. yes the Torah. right good so what blood is being shed for you in the context of Islam no, no. right so how is your sin being atoned because you repent to Allah sincere repentance Rep repentance won't cut it why not because, because Allah knows what's no, what's because the Torah, because the Torah says, without the shedding of blood, okay. there is no remission of sin. Did you not concede to me earlier? Now you're born again. You still are prone to sin. Good. When you sin, can you I explain? There's not yeah, a but there's a context to that. Look, every time no, 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 no. There's, there's a context. A to there's a, a context. And dying. There is a context to that. Okay, go on. We have a human nature. Yeah. We have a sinful nature. Yes. yes. And we have a divine nature. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Divine so nature. yeah, divine nature is that's your spirit. Right. Yes. Okay. We have a spirit. I am not talking about. Soul. I am not talking about sinful perfection. Okay. Yes. I'm talking about a nature that dominates us without God. It dominates us yes. and drives us to destruction. Yes. Period. Our desires. Yes. Our right. Yes. Good. So God recognizing that you can't fight the sin nature. You can't. Hold on. You can't fight sin. Yes. You're doomed. In your own strength, okay. what he does, uh -huh. he brings a process that saves man. Right. He gives his son, yes. hold on, Jesus Christ, who now, when his blood was shed, he now becomes the sacrifice for your sin. And is that just hold on, hold on, just. yes, hold on. Knowing that you can never be saved, he gives you his righteousness. Is that just? Hold on, no, of answer. course. It's and it's it his mercy. mercy. It's, it's merciful. Just and merciful. Because you can't say it. Ideas. No, no, you're not listening to they're me. You're not ideas. listening to me. You're not listening to me. How? Jesus gives you justification. Okay. He gives you blamelessness. Okay. He gives you forgiveness. He gives you right standing. Even though you don't deserve it. As far as you believe in him yep. and what he did on the cross. Okay. Because you can't clean yourself up. You can't change yourself either. Okay. You can't. So you're destined for hell. Okay. So Jesus steps in takes the punishment okay. yes and gives you right standing and your, your repentance talk about your repentance so when we repent yeah. you repent to jesus christ okay. who is the mediator yeah. and the one who died on the cross yeah. and you ask for forgiveness so his blood's already been shed but you still need to repent to him his blood has been shed yes because you're not perfect you're forgiven okay. you're saved but you still have a sin problem i'm just hearing the islamic way of no 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 you're not because because what happens this is what happens what? When you put your faith in Jesus, yes. yes, his power is released through the person of the Holy Spirit. And he now begins to sanctify you or make you holy on an ongoing basis. Yeah, it's a process. Yeah. And that process never stops till you die. Okay. But you are always justified. You're always blameless. So far as like your faith is in Christ. To me, do you know what to me that sounds like? Go on. It sounds like an excuse. It sounds like you're... You're justifying to yourself yeah. that it's not you that's actually patterning up and, and being good and uh, not sinning. You're just, you're just attributing it's that to the Holy Spirit. Bro, you can't stop sinning. Okay. You, you, you said, can't. You, you have a sinful nature that dominates okay, you, you yeah, without Christ. You said the Holy Spirit sanctifies you. Man's heart is corrupt. Yeah, but there are ways. No, no. There are no ways to deal with sin. But what? Are, but, but what we're told is. Why haven't you stopped sinning? Okay, wait. Sorry, sorry. Listen because to Because human error. But sorry. We're told that if we pick up Allah's book, that is medicine for the soul and for the heart. And if you sin, but okay, okay, okay. There but, is. Okay. You've just agreed with me, sir, that with there is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. Okay, can I, can no, 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 no. That's in the Torah. Okay, the yes, Torah the says blood. the blood. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So you just said, yeah. No. The Holy Spirit sanctifies you throughout your life. Yeah. Keeps you on the right path. Uh -huh. I think that's you justifying your own good nature and good deeds and your own. No. There is nothing own, good in us. I know. Okay. Yeah. I know we're sinful in nature. Yeah. To say there's no good in us is, is a drag person. In my opinion, we didn't put the reason. There is no good in us. We fall into sin. We fall into our own desires. Yeah. However, 
yeah. we turn to we turn to God. Yeah. We repent. We try to not do that. We try to not whatever sin it may be. We try not to drink alcohol. Yeah. We try not to gamble. Yeah. To to me, that's just me accounting for my own sins and for my own behaviour. To, to me, it seems like you are just attributing your own fixing up of yourself no. to Jesus. We are Holy placing Spirit. our faith in what Christ has done. Yes, okay. how he is addressing okay. and him cruci what and how he was crucified and what that means uh -huh. in terms of overcoming the world, the flesh and the devil. We're placing our faith totally and saying to Jesus, I can't do it. I can't change myself. It, you know, whatever, the only thing I'm going to do is believe that when you died on the cross, you addressed my past, present and future sin. And I put in my faith. Yeah, all the things are supernaturally done okay. as you place your faith right. in the right thing in Christ and Him crucified. And all the sins are human. Yeah. The sins are human and are dealt with past, present and future by the, sh the one time shedding of Jesus' blood. One time. He's dealt with your past, present and future sin okay. by faith. So I don't get why you need to repent after Because you fall even though you're a Christian, you fall and commit sin. We all do. But there is, but there, yeah, but you've got to repent. You tell Jesus, confess your sins to Jesus Christ. No, repent when you fall, when you sin. But isn't the future already forgiven? Yeah, exactly. If, when, you, when your faith is in Christ and you confess your sin, because you will fall. Yeah. Exactly. So there needs to. But the future is forgiven. So why can't Yes, it is. It is forgiven, but when you sin, Yes, when you fall, yes, you still need to confess that sin, take responsibility for that sin, yeah, and ask believe, and ask you Jesus and ask no, no and ask Jesus to forgive you but of that sin and, and that? receive power yes. to overcome that but sin he on an ongoing sin? basis. But hasn't he already forgiven me for that sin? Since Without time? confessing, no. But, but Your wait. sins are not, it's not. This is not once saved, always saved. Yeah. Yes. This is about a system that God has put in place to overcome the world, the flesh and the devil. When you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. Yes? He is faithful and just to cleanse you from all enrichment. Confess your sins. Ask for forgiveness and it is forgiven instantly. That's the system he's put in place. Yes? And if you fall, ask for forgiveness, he forgives. But then wait. But I'm, you're I'm, in Christ. I concede, I don't really get I've got one it question. Nice talking to you. No, no, wait, last question. Uh, but, then, but then, doesn't that give people an excuse to just not be good? No, because no, no. At the end of the no. day, they know that if I wholeheartedly just believe... Have you seen a crack at it? Yes. They have a habitual sin, right? Yeah, but... If well, hold on, hold on. Okay, yeah. And I have habitual sins. Yeah, fair enough. We all have sins, yeah, correct? Enough. And we need to be weaned off that sin. Yeah. And it's a process. Yeah, yeah. Yes? That sin can only be overcome as we place our faith in Christ and then he gives us what's called grace, power to overcome. But it doesn't happen overnight. It's so a process. But wait, so wait, so wait, so can we overcome sin? Not in our strength. But, but, but by placing our faith in Christ, yes. But we never reach a place of sinful per perfection until yeah. Christ comes. But there is an ongoing, what's the word? Purification, ongoing sanctification made holy, that, that happens right through. So we need to move from where we are to where we need to be on an ongoing basis. And so far as we're doing that and placing our faith in Christ, we're saved. You know what it looks like? It looks like the difference between Islam and Christianity is this, yeah? We take responsibility wholeheartedly for either side. So when we sin, full responsibility, but when we do the right thing, it's fully on us. But you look different because either side of, of the spectrum, it's all down to Jesus. If I'm a sinner... Absolutely! Well, fine. It is all down to Jesus because we I'm can't there, we can't save ourselves. Why not? We can't because okay, we're right sinful. Now, okay, okay. Right now, we are dominated okay. by the sinful nature. It's not. Down to us. It's like, not. The point of us being yeah. like because the as we we are, we're putting our faith in Christ and what He's done, He's the one who does the work do of transformation. Life, do you this life is a test? No. I believe that we, when God created us, He never created the earth like this. This is man's mess. Yeah. Huh? Well, the thing is this, he's giving you freedom of choice. If I walk in front of a car, that's my choice yeah, to do that. But I will, uh, I'll be hit by the car and knocked down. 
No, you can't shift responsibility like that. Take responsibility for your own decisions and mine. No, no, like, I'm saying like God. Okay, it's true. You take responsibility like for your own actions. Yeah. So if you do something good, that's down on you then. No. If, wait. No. If it is. Me, it is God in me doing the good works. So when you when you give charity, when I. God do it. It is God in me right. doing the good works. <laughs> but God's not in you. God's above his No, he's in. When we give our life to Jesus Christ, he lives in us by the person of the Holy Spirit. What, what was God's reason for creation? Yeah, what's not this. This is man's doing. What was his but isn't God all powerful, all knowing? Yes, but he's given freedom of choice. Okay, you tell me what was Yeah, we are given freedom of choice. Yes, and Adam and sin, Adam and Eve chose to sin. Yes. Okay. Chose to sin. Yeah. Yes. But he would know that though. But he can't, inter a God of love, cannot create robots Basically, and um, make um, them do right. He's I'm not going to do that. That's a contradiction um, of his character. He's, making you he do right. Right. he's, coming he's not he making do right. right. I am agreeing to work with the Holy oh, Spirit. So it's like, it's a contract. It, it is a contract, right. absolutely, okay. that is covered yeah. <coughs> by the blood so he of Jesus in, Christ. So he puts in a battery. Like, no, I have come in agreement yes. with believing in what Christ has done and him dying on the cross, I then receive the power to begin to live right. I cooperate okay, so with the Holy Spirit. Okay, I've got, oh wait, I've got one question. I don't perceive Jesus the same way you do. So when I do good, what is the reason for that? When you do good, yeah. does it save your soul? Does it address your sin? Doing good works, does it address your sin? It doesn't address my sin, but it adds okay. good Okay. Uh, 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 no, no, no. Your good, works, your good works, your good works doesn't address sin, and therefore you are still under the law of sin, which leads to destruction. Yeah, but Islam has a solution. Fair enough. That will add to my good deeds, which will come in handy on the day of judgment. But for my bad. Your good works has nothing to do with the day of judgment. It can't exonerate you. Yeah, wait. wait. Oh, let me give you a concept in yeah. that we believe in. You know, every single um, person will only enter Jannah not by their good deeds, but by the mercy of Allah. But where we differ is if you still need to be a good person and live a good life because you can't use it as an excuse because good will just send you to hell. Because hell is earned, heaven is given by Allah's mercy only. But, but, wait, wait. But, 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 but what you're saying and what you're teaching is that good works yeah. puts you in right standing with God yeah, and, and gives you your good works cannot address your yeah. sinful yeah. nature but we don't, yeah, yeah. hold on hold on, hold on. Do, wait, therefore yeah. you are still separated from God yeah, and you're still sin. on your way to destruction yeah. but guess how we do with sin how I sincerely repent to God and, and my sins are either forgotten about all they are white and also to avoid are you sin. sure does yeah. it tell you that your sins are forgiven? Yeah, your sins are forgiven or they're, or, they're, they're forgiven or white. Which means that they will literally... How are they white? How do you know? By sincere repentance. God says so. What did, the Torah, what did the Torah say? I don't go by the Torah. But you're obligated That's to good. believe in the Torah. Okay, there's all the corrupt... You're, you're obligated... All the corrupt to, are you obligated to, to yes. believe in the Torah? Yes. But you're obligated to believe in the Torah, correct? Yeah. And Muhammad says, go to the people of the book. Yeah, the, in the Torah, the in the Torah, the, it teaches the, that without the remission, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Also, I, blood, the you, there's no blood being shed where you're concerned as a Muslim. Okay, Do you understand? Yeah, because we are told ways of how we can No, but that is man's way, man's man tradition. Man's man's and you know what? It's an insult to God to try and address your sin in your own effort. It's an insult. He wants you to place your faith in what his son has done, yeah, okay, wait, who died on the cross and his something? blood was shed. Can I tell you something? Yeah. In the Torah, yeah. it says Isaiah, in Isaiah, yeah. there's a prophecy, right? Yeah. Tell me why Jews heard this prophecy yeah. in Isaiah. Scholars, scholarly Jews, learned Jews, yeah. they traveled to Medina. You know where Medina is? Yeah. In Saudi, yeah? they traveled to Medina because it said in the scripture. Which oh, yeah. Jews? Jews of the time, way back when. Yeah. They, they read from this prophecy. They gathered from this prophecy. Where? Which prophecy? In the Quran? Isaiah, Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. Oh, the Torah. That a prophet would arise yeah. in Medina. Okay. What, what what scripture are we talking about? What major prophet came through in Yeah, but what verse and what chapter are we talking about? 42 verse what? Let's see if it's talking about It talks about the Christians the pillars. It talks about the pillars. Christians, Christians say it's Jesus. Yeah. Jews say it's Isaiah. 
but if you're really if you really see for what it is so you're saying in the in the Bible it's saying Isaiah. You said it's we are saying it's Isaiah. The Bible says Isaiah. Christians say it's Jesus. Jews yeah. say it's Isaiah. And the ones who can see it for what it is say it's Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Uh, it talks about Medina. It talks about the sea of Medina. And Isaiah like 53, it talks about how it's, it, it's, it's, it's titled in English, Suffering Servant, right? right? And the name Yeshua yeah. means Suffering Servant. Okay. So it might as well, literally, oh, I think Yeshua meant something else. No, 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 no. Um, the word Yeshua, or the name Yeshua, is the same name as Joshua, which means Suffering Servant. It's basically okay. the English version. Okay. So if you read that in Hebrew, the thing will say Yeshua, it'll say Jesus. Okay. And then some guy called Jesus shows up later on. Okay. He says, oh, you put nails in, in his hand, and the and, and the whip. Him and the differences in Isaiah. He was, he was beaten for other people's iniquities, yeah. stuff like that. He gives, ge he gives geographical uh, coordinates, so to speak, as to where this person will arise. It says Salah. Yeah. Mount Salah, which is in Medina. Yeah. Really? In Medina is where this mountain is. I've only, um, I, I only from memory recall Isaiah 53, okay. like, like, like chapter 53. I, I, I can't from memory remember. But, but yeah. for me, all I know is Jesus never really ventured below into Arabia. Well, the, well, the, thing, the thing is this, the thing you need to... The same book of Isaiah in verse 9, 6 says, Unto us a child is born, a son is given, his, his name shall be Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. All right? Um, it's in there, in the scripture. Um, and um, so it prophesies Jesus Christ to be born and what his purpose would be. It, should, it, it talks about where he would live. He said the baby would be mighty God. Yeah. Unto us a, a child is born, a son is given, and his name shall be mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, counselor, mighty name. God, yes, mighty, equated to God. You've got to understand that the baby... I think Jews would exist today if they read that passage. But the thing is this, divinity, divinity put on humanity. When Jesus came as a baby, it, his divinity was intact. Divinity was just putting on a, a human suit. He was fully God and fully man. And like I keep saying, there were times that he needed to express himself through his humanity, depending on the audience and what lesson needed to be taught. And, like and there I were times said, like that, I said, that he had to express himself where, through his divinity. Where in the scripture, uh -huh. moving divine, it's the editor. There's no editor. John, uh, the book of John, yeah. chapter one. Right. If you read the whole thing, it tells you the nature of Jesus Christ, how he's fully God and how he's fully man. So you're telling me he he do normal stuff, day to day stuff. Humanity. When it called, he would go to the toilet. He will sweat. Okay. He will talk. Yes. He would. Ha he has a. He had a human nature, yeah. but he was fully God and fully man because the reason why that's happening is because he was designed to reconcile the father in heaven to humanity so even his very nature is teaching that of God's nature to put him down at such a level where he is doing these human things yes why ask yourself why because there was nobody on the whole of the planet that could address the sin there was no, everybody was so sinful. So they, he so sent, he, he didn't a prophet. He sent his son, he sent his son, no, to die on the cross. His blood was shed. There is no prophet's blood who was shed for the remission of mankind. Jesus is not a prophet. Jesus is God. You know, no matter how many times I talk to Christians, yeah. it will always baffle me when they refer to Jesus as the Son and then God and then separate and then together again yeah. and then as one. It will always baffle me. You know why we did and it always because throws me we off. believe Jesus. I don't have a question, right? I mean, we hold Jesus so high yeah, as a human being, but the difference is we believe he did prophecy, yeah, exactly. miracles as well, but so that's what prophets do. Okay, but the difference so is in order where we differ from that, how can a man be God? Uh, uh -huh. Like the Trinity does not make sense on yeah. any logical level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, 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 I mean, I mean evidence. Well, I've just explained the nature of God to you. Which is? God 
Okay. I've just told you, it's fully God, yeah. fully man. Fully man, how? Why not? Can God do anything? No, no, God can't do anything. God can. That is not God. No. God. Can God exist in multiple forms okay. at the same time? Okay, let me ask you a question. Yes or no? So he's not God then? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. He can't be God then? Wait, wait, wait. Let me ask the question again. Can God exist in multiple forms? Yes? At the same time? Yes or no? Yes or I'm no? I'm not sure, I'm not sure. But no, no, yes or no? Because if your answer is no, then he's not okay. God. But okay, but okay, but let me say something. God can only work in God like nature. So, so God can only do things that that's according to your no, no, finite. Yeah, but your brain is limited, sir. Yeah. God chose, okay. he chose, he chose to humble himself and walk among men because he had to become a sacrifice. He had to die on the cross. He had to address the sin nature that wasn't being addressed. He had to shed his blood once and for all for past, present and future sin. That's why he came in that form for us. Okay. To save us okay. from our sin. Okay, God only works in ways that befit his nature. No, but that's your okay. opinion. No, no, no. That's logical. And let me explain why. Logic okay, is flawed. Yeah, let me give you a question. Let me give you a question. Can God create something, let's say a stone, that is heavier than him to pick up? Answer that. Can God yes. Yes. How? Because God can pick up anything. He's God. So then, yeah, so then that means the God can do anything. Wait, so that means the stone wouldn't be stronger than, than God. God is God can do anything. So he's okay. so unlimited God, okay. in power. So can God create an, an an object so heavy that he can't carry it? What's that got to do with anything? I'm asking you a question because, because God can carry everything. Yeah, so so literally means that God cannot create something. Why? Yeah, what, wait, yeah, wait. yeah, but brother, yeah. why so are you wait. trying to why are you trying to use logic? To understand because, because, the spiritual plan because, of God. Because, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. You've got to allow God to interpret his word so that you understand. If you use logic and read the Bible, I am telling you, you'll be lost. You've got to allow the Holy Spirit to teach you what it means and what he's trying to say. About, about, about my God, everything in my book is logical. If you can bring That's why it's flawed. That's why the Quran is flawed. Why? Why is that? Because it's all on logic. It's on works okay. Okay. Day, and religion. Okay, to this day, how many scholars, how many people have tried to disprove the Quran? Not one till today. Yeah. It's, been, it's been written over 1,400 years ago. Till uh, today, not a single person has been, dis uh, wait, has been able to disprove it scientifically, at, um, historically, and on many other levels. How can a book that, and also, they have found a um, wait, they, wait. They found a Quran in in a in a Birmingham yeah. that's carbon um, dated back to at least I think 1,400, 1,300 years ago. And and wait, and they wait. They measured up that text till today measures up perfectly to, to the letter. And with that, it the Quran, did the Quran come 600 years after the Bible? Okay. Because did it come 600 okay. years okay, after wait. the Bible? The reason why the Quran was... Okay. Did it? Yes or no? Okay, yes. Yes, good. Right, so why therefore should I go to the Quran how, okay. to verify what the Bible says okay, let me when the why. Bible came before? Let me why. Because there are things that, for example, I've seen this recently. Yeah. For example, there, there, um, there is... Uh, who was it? Wait, wait, one second. Let me wait. Let me try to. I'll find it. I'll find it. But it talks about um, um, wait, an Egyptian king that in the Bible stated that he was a pharaoh. I'm gonna find yeah. the name. Yeah. But in the Quran, it specifically says that he was a king. And then historians said, oh, we found we finally found a mistake in the Quran that it says that so and so was 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 a king. Whereas the Bible says he was a pharaoh, and then when we finally learned what what um, um what they could hieroglyphic what what the Egyptian what the Egyptian scripture means, they found out that when they were reading it, that the ruler at the time 
yeah. was 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 considered a king and not a pharaoh, yeah. whereas your Bible no, no, no. said that he was a pharaoh and our book says he was a king. If we copied your book, why would it say that he was a king for us? Because we have wait, we have mentioned of pharaohs, so why would it well, It's not just that. Your Quran, yeah, you, your Quran you says that you it is example. written to confirm yeah. the Torah and the Injil. Yeah. In other words, a book that is written to confirm. Oh, hold on, yeah. okay, yeah. a book that is written to confirm yeah. the books that existed before yeah. needs to be verified by the Torah and the Injil. Yeah, because okay, because before but it contradicts yeah. the Torah. Because man corrupts his book. Man can, man, okay, when language is translated, is that way? Is that yeah. from God to man? No, that's from man to man. When you change, look, when you literally change the language, yeah. that, okay, if you're speaking in Arabic and yeah. then I want to translate it to him in English, yeah. there are certain words that I can change to him. That is not the direct translation. Yeah. Words can be manipulated and changed over the years. But I forget that, yeah. what, what I want to say is this year, the Quran talks about prophets from from the from the from the Injil, from the Bible, because we believe in those prophets. But also the Quran talks about future events. How can a book have have um, have a correct what's it called? It has um, correct events of the future, correct events of the past. It's the final message, it's the final word of let, let me leave this message. Let me leave this message with you. Yes. Jesus Christ loves you. You are loved by God. Here you are loved by God. But the only sacrifice for your sin that God will honor is the sacrifice of his son. But as you place your faith in Christ and him crucified, as you do that, repent of your sin and accept him as your Lord and Savior. That is when you're saved. If you don't do that, you're lost. That's all I can say to you. We disagree, we disagree, but I hope you make that decision, bro. We disagree. I hope you make that decision. May, wait, may God guide both of us. May God guide both of us to the truth. That's what we can say. Yes, definitely. I need to move around. Okay, cool, brother Alex. Yes. <laughs> yeah. God loves you. We are not here to score points or to prove Islam is a lie and look the situation is mankind is in a terrible dilemma we're in a state where sin dominates us we are separated from God we are far from God on our way to hell but Jesus came and stepped in the gap and took the impact or the implication of your sin past present future once and for all he took that on the cross look ladies and gentlemen you can't change yourself you can't transform yourself you cannot fight the devil the world the flesh the devil yourself you can't you're fighting a losing battle neither can you use religious discipline to fight sin place your faith in what Christ has done on the cross and as you place your faith there he will transform you he will heal you he will save you may God bless you in Jesus name Amen Amen, Amen. Yeah, praise ah! God.